Hi, welcome to this example, another in my series on projectile motion. And what we're going to look at in this particular example is where we have a particle being thrown from a height, but at an angle to the downward horizontal. And so what we've got then is a stone is thrown from the edge of a vertical cliff with a speed of 26 meters per second at an angle of inverse tan 5 twelfths below the horizontal. Stone hits the sea at a point 72 meters from the base of the cliff. And what we've got to do is find the time of flight and the height of the cliff. So the first thing I'd need to do is to draw a sketch. So what we'll do is we'll have, say, this as being our cliff. And we'll have the sea. This will be horizontal down here. And we've got to find the time of flight and the height of the cliff. So we'll call the height of the cliff h, h meters, okay, and go from there to there. And when we project this particle, it's going to be projected at a speed of 26 meters per second. So we'll put that like that. It's projected at 26 meters per second at an angle of inverse tan 5 twelfths below the horizontal. So if we were to draw a dotted line there, this angle here, let's call it theta. We know that the tan of this angle equals 5 twelfths. So let's just put that in that we're given that tan theta equals 5 twelfths. Now when the particle is projected at 26 meters per second, it's going to move something like this. This will be its trajectory and it will land into the sea just like that. And the time it takes to go from here down to here, we're going to call t, the time of flight. It will be big T, big T seconds. We also know that it lands at a distance of 72 meters from the cliff. So we can mark that in 72 meters there. That's often called the range. So the range is 72 meters. What else would I need to put on this diagram? Well, there's acceleration due to gravity acts vertically downwards. And in this problem, like most problems, we'll take the acceleration due to gravity to be 9.8 meters per second per second. So I feel that that's a reasonable diagram at this point in time. Now when it comes to finding the time of flight and the height of the cliff, in problems like this what we need to do is split our initial speed into two components and we always split it into one horizontally and one vertically. So if we just mark those components in, components of velocity, there'll be one in that direction then and one in this direction. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with splitting a vector quantity into two components. The one that contains the angle always involves cosine and the one that excludes the angle involves sine. So this component, because it contains the angle theta, is 26 cos theta meters per second. The one that excludes the angle will now be 26 sine theta and that will be measured in meters per second. Now we move on to trying to work out then the time of flight and to do that we consider the horizontal motion. Sometimes we can find the time of flight by considering the vertical motion, but you'll see later that we haven't got enough information to do that at this stage. We have to go for the horizontal motion. So tell the reader what you're doing, okay? So what I'm going to say is consider the horizontal motion. Just write that in there consider horizontal motion. Now when you're considering horizontal motion the only acceleration that acts on the particle is vertically downwards. 
as far as m movement horizontally goes there is no acceleration we can regard it as moving at 26 cos theta meters per second in a horizontal sense and it's just going at a constant speed so in other words we can use the equation that distance equals speed times time or we can just put it down as s equals ut because there's no acceleration displacement here equals the initial speed times the time now what is s s we know is 72 what is u the initial horizontal speed 26 cos theta so we'll put that down the u equals 26 cos theta but what is that value well we could turn to this to work it out tan theta equals 5 twelfths if we were to draw a little right angle triangle here okay it's not drawn to scale but this angle here is theta we should know that the tan of an angle compares the opposite side over the adjacent so if I compare the opposite side to theta which is 5 units to the adjacent side which is 12 units we can get this side here it's a well-known triangle it's called the 512 13 triangle but if you didn't know it you just use Pythagoras' theorem it's going to be the square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared the square root of 169 which is 13 so when it comes to working out what 26 cos theta is we'll just do it over here 26 multiplied by cos theta is going to be 26 multiplied by well the cosine of theta compares the adjacent with the hypotenuse 12 over 13 and 13 cancels nicely into 26 it goes twice and two 12s are 24 so the initial horizontal speed is going to be 24 meters per second and we're out to find the time t which I'm calling big T so using s equals ut or distance equals speed times time because there is no acceleration in the horizontal sense then what we have got here is that s is 72 equals u which is 24 multiplied by t which is big T and if I divide both sides by 24 we therefore find that t equals 72 divided by 24 which is 3 3 seconds so the time of flight is 3 seconds the time it takes to go from here into the sea takes 3 seconds now we can go on to find the height of the cliff h because to do that all we need to do now is consider the vertical motion and again write something in so that the reader has an idea of what you're doing now when it comes to considering the, ho the sorry not horizontal motion the vertical motion we form a particular SUVAT equation remember we're looking at the motion for constant acceleration s is displacement u is initial velocity v final velocity a acceleration and t time and what we do in questions like this is we need a positive sense and if the projection is basically downwards take the positive sense to be down so what is s the displacement going to be well it's going to be starting from here O. it's going to be downwards it's going to be plus h h meters u is now the initial vertical velocity and we can see it's 26 sine theta so I'll put that in 26 sine theta as for a value we could work it out over here 26 sine theta it's going to be 26 times well what is sine theta sine theta compares opposite over hypotenuse so multiplied by 5 over 13 the 13 cancels into the 26 nicely twice two fives are 10 so it's moving downwards initially at 10 meters per second as for the final velocity 
down here in the vertical sense it's not zero okay it enters the C, C with a particular speed I don't know what that is yet okay we're not worried about what it is but uh, so I don't know what that is acceleration it's positive it's in the positive sense it's 9.8 meters per second per second as for the time t well I now know it it's three seconds so you can see by the way that I couldn't have found the time of flight through the vertical motion in this particular problem because I didn't know t at the beginning okay and there wouldn't have been an equation that I could use but now that I know t is 3 I can think of an equation that links these together that excludes v that equation has to be s equals ut plus a half a t squared and if we put our values in for s it's going to be h what we're trying to find u times t so that's going to be 10 times the 3 and then it's plus a half times the acceleration which we see is 9.8 multiplied by t squared in other words 3 squared and if you work this out you find you get 74.1 74.1 meters then is going to be the height of the cliff